We're at the corner of Bobby Dodd and Techwood here in Midtown Atlanta. The Yellow Jacket fans ready to host another Thursday night in this historic building. Follow the rambling wreck inside historic Grant Field, where tonight Georgia Tech will try to win its 400th game at this site something no other college football team has ever done in the same stadium. This is the first time in the series between these teams that both teams are ranked. Maryland has not won here in Atlanta. And the Terrapins last win in the series, 1996. Maryland won the toss to further the option of the second half, so Tech will receive. And Fadad Silkovic will kick it off for Maryland. The Terps are 5-0. Oh. Are they for real? We find out over the next three hours. Live drive kick will go out of the end zone and be a touchback. But Georgia Tech will have 80 yards of field to work with. George Godsey comes on. He's a graduate student, fifth-year senior. His completion percentage is 66% this year, a little bit higher. This is his 17th start, his career record 13 and 3. On the Bud Light starting lineups, this offense averages about 40 a game. Joe Burns, 90 yards per game on the ground. Three receivers, Kelly Campbell, maybe the fastest in the ACC. Jonathan Smith coming on, Watkins 17 a catch. And the tight end's been more involved in the offense since Ralph Friedgen has left. Opening drive of the night starts from the 20. Watkins heading up the field, and Gotsi dumps it to Will Glover, who lost three yards on the play. Tony Jackson up from the strong safety spot to knock down the junior from Tampa. Check the rest of the lineups. Here is the battle up front. Number 61, David Schmidt Gall is a senior leader up front. Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, said he's playing like an All-American this year. He's a great football player for Tech up front. Yeah, Roundtree, Hill, Feldheim, and Whaley as the defensive front four. Roundtree, a good pass rusher, has eight pressures this year. A run with Joe Burns does not get back to the drive start of the 20, so it's third and about 11 coming up. Against this Maryland defense, it's been pretty good. Allowed 14 points per game. Playmakers here, Aaron Thompson, very consistent starter. 39th straight start. Henderson, their best defensive player. Leon Joe, the weak backer. And Kirk, the secondary, it's really playing well. Well, Kerry Blackney, the defensive coordinator, has brought in an aggressive style to Maryland. And be, to be able to do that, you have to be able to play man coverage from time to time. And they have some cornerbacks who are tremendous, very athletic in the secondary. And we'll keep an eye on them tonight, see how they do against Georgia Tech's receivers. Needing to get to the 30 for a first down. Gotzi pressured as he throws. Complete to the 33, Kelly Campbell. First down and a gain of 14. This is just timing from George Gotzi and Kelly Campbell. It's something that they, we've seen now for the last few years at Georgia Tech. The ball's in the air right now before he makes the cut. And you can see it per thrown perfectly away from the defender right into the arms. By the way, George Gotzi got hit right in the mouth as soon as he released the football. Nice throw by the senior. Pressure coming. You saw Campbell is tied. Harvey Middleton's record. The last record Harvey really has here at Georgia Tech. Kelly's taking him out of the record book. Option picks. And Sidney Ford takes it over the 40 and to the 43-yard line. Nine yards. And both teams will show you some option here tonight. Uh, we got Herbstreit here, all fired up, Coach. We're going to see options, speed options, triple options. He's a happy man. Well, Kirk's made an excellent point about Maryland playing some man-for-man -man defense. And when you play man-for-man -man defense, ladies and gentlemen, the option is the number one play because you don't get support from the secondary. Saw so that nine-yard pick up there. Second and one. Good passing down. And incomplete. Big hit by Denard Wilson as he broke it up from Will Glover. We've seen five offensive plays. We've seen a variety of formations from Georgia Tech. Everything from a one-back, four-receiver look to a, a two-back set, triple option down the line to pick up nine yards. This is what Ralph Reach had brought to Georgia Tech, and this is what Bill O'Brien continues to run for the Yellow Jackets. Very sophisticated scheme. Another formation to try to Matt Bay in motion. Bottom of the football, and Maryland kicked it around, and it's picked up by Henderson. D.J. Henderson, inside the five, touchdown!
This opportunistic Maryland team scores on defense and special teams again this year. Oh, the mishandled snap on second and one, they didn't get it. Third and one, you go power football, and it turns into a Maryland touchdown. Nick Novak has been shaky kicking this year. Just fine there as he adds the extra point. He's from the same hometown as Cal Ripken, Aberdeen, Maryland. E.J. Henderson, 42-yard fumble return. Maryland strikes first. Back in Atlanta, Maryland with the third defensive or special teams touchdown on the season. E.J. Henderson officially credited with a 36-yard fumble return after they kicked it and booted it around trying to pick it up. But the Terps need 7 nothing for Ralph Regent. Now that's Ralph Regent's best case scenario to jump out early and get the crowd out of the ball game. And he does it on defense of all teams. Defense. Really that their defense has been opportunistic all year, but yeah. you're right. Against this that's their 16th turnover yeah. they've created this year as a defense. One of the best in the country. Without Sokovic, good distance on the kick and no return for Kelly Campbell. Let's go back to the turnover. Remember, incomplete pass on second and one. This was third and one. As we see this, the fumble will occur right there where George Gotti does not get the ball directly into Joe Burns' hands. It goes through, and then it's all over. Mike Whaley had the chance initially. You can see Burns doesn't even have a chance. Right there, I thought Whaley recovered it, but the ball stayed loose. Now, you look at E.J. Henderson. Not only does he pick it up, but he shows tremendous athletic ability by picking the ball up and running it into the end zone. Well, back comes the Georgia Tech offense, now down seven. And not much of the run game as Burns and, uh, rather, Henderson and Charles Hill stop the junior Joe Burns. The fumble lost by Georgia Tech is just their second on the season. So this is a team that really takes care of the ball pretty well. but not on that third and one. Second and 10, and Burns, the yard or so, with Henderson waiting for him, along with Tony Jackson. Lee, this Georgia Tech team is four and one. Obviously, with the events of September 11th, it stopped this team's uh, long talk about meeting with Florida State. So they had a long stretch off coach and lost that game to Clemson in overtime. And the interesting thing about that, Mike, the defense only had to play one play, make one play, and they'd be undefeated. They never made the big play defensively, and they lost the big game. Several opportunities Absolutely. in that game, including a fourth down where Clemson hit a big pass to go the distance. Needing to get to the 30. Gotti is in trouble and goes down. Well, he fell on the quarterback, but Aaron Thompson had a great push into the backfield, not the blocker into Godsey, and it's a punting situation for Tech. Maryland's very active with their defense, moving people back and forth. Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, likes the zone blitz scheme, and it's based on confusion. We see it around the country, and there it worked to perfection. I'll tell you, that was as much a coverage sack as it was anything. He didn't have anybody open. Dan Dyke kicking to Julian Gary, the senior from Horseheads, New York. Maryland showing some pressure. A low punt, they say, get out of the way, fellow Terps, does wow. the receiver, and mm. it's down to the 44, so not much there, just a 29-yard punt, an excellent field position for Maryland to take over. Well, Sean Hill, the senior quarterback, making his ninth start, six and two as a starter, Six touchdowns, three INTs this year. He's joined in the backfield by Bruce Perry. 100 yards in each game this year. Lynch is a blocker. Gary's their top receiver. Jeff Dugan's really a blocker as well. They don't have a Barry Bonds to hit a home run in the wide receiving core. But they have some guys who can take it out of the yard sporadically. How about this for your first drive? Starting at their 46. And there is Perry. Shifty and elusive. And then delivers a blow. Just shy of the yellow line, nine yellow first line down yards. Well, this offensive line has certainly helped when the back has 500 yard games in the middle. Melvin Fowler, 39th straight start. Todd White starts despite a sprained foot. 
Georgia Tech up front. This is a thing that separates them from other teams. They have defensive ends that you typically would see in Tallahassee in the ACC. Greg Gathers and Nick Rogers, who is physically very gifted. They need big nights tonight to be able to apply pressure on Sean Hill. After a pickup of nine, it's second in a yard. Here is Perry. Keeps moving forward, and he is right at the first down mark. We'll check Bruce the measurement. Perry. Ricardo Wimbush in there for the stop. As they sort it out, Wimbush is joined on that Georgia Tech linebacking core by Ross Mitchell, who on Sunday morning was a fullback. They had to move him over because of two injuries to middle linebackers, and Kiaran Fox is the other linebacker. The free safety, 27, Jeremy Myers, had a 4.0 last semester in management, one of the best students on the team. No wonder he's called the quarterback of the <laughs> secondary. He calls all the adjustments, Kirk, for all the secondary coverages because that's why he's an outstanding student, an outstanding football player. First down for the Terrapins. Hey, Kirk, we talked about this. 45 in yellow, in white, Ross Mitchell. Been playing fullback all year used to be a starting middle linebacker a couple of years ago what an adjustment in a short week for him in three days he finds out that he's not only been switched to the other side of the ball you're starting on thursday night against maryland who's undefeated hill quick pass incomplete it has to be thrown outside julian gary it came inside and marvius hester was there and on it like you mentioned that he's coming in and stepping in for one of the more talented players on the this Yellow Jacket defense, Daryl Smith. And we were talking about it earlier. What happened against Clemson? Well, the coaches point out that Daryl Smith went down, and he is a true leader of this defense and a future great in the NFL someday. So Ross Mitchell has big shoes to fill. Turn right back to your linebacking days from 1999. See him adjusting the defense? <laughs> Hill on the option. Lowers his shoulder and has a first down. Still going to the 21 yard line well if you lined up all the quarterbacks in the ACC for a 40 yard dash Godsey and Hill would probably finish eighth and ninth but it doesn't mean they're not effective running the option especially when you're 6'3 221 pounds like Sean Hill number 14 is that time our man Mitchell over pursued the play and Hill cut it back inside that's why he made that big yardage first and 10 at the 22 Lone back is Perry. Here comes the sophomore from Philadelphia. About four yards to the 18. Flag is down as Myers, the 4.0 junior, made the tackle. Jack Childress is our official. Signals a hold against the Terrapins. We heard a lot coming into this game about Maryland and their offense, and they're off to such an incredible start, averaging 35 points a game. In the early going here, you're seeing a big reason. Sean Hill, the poise that he has demonstrated throughout the early part of the season, but the offensive line. You're seeing them right now at the point of attack, pushing Georgia Tech back. So no matter what call they're calling, whether it's an option or they're handing the ball off, they've got room to run, and that's because of that big offensive line of Maryland. Also, Sean Hill, as remember, he was at Hutchinson Junior College for a couple of years. So this young man, although he's played a little bit of football for Maryland, he's an experienced football player with great size, and that's what Ralph Bridget needs to run his attack. After the holding flag, it's first and 20. Perry was effective as a receiver against Virginia in these situations last week. Hill's going to take off and get brought down at the 31. Gained a couple of yards running up the middle. Second and about 18 coming up. Gary Johnson, the junior from LaGrange here in Georgia, made the play. You see what Hill has done in the first three games. Ralph Friedman said the passing offense isn't there. It isn't crisp. It has gotten better in the last two games. You see the balance from a yardage standpoint is there. Those last two games, wins over West Virginia by 12 and Virginia by 20 both in College Park. Hill's throw is caught by Julian Gary. Upended at the 23-yard line. Hester and Wimbush over there. Gain of nine. You mentioned the balance of this offense. A lot of it has to do with the success of the tailback, Bruce Perry. Teams now are overloading the box and trying to take Perry away. We're seeing that early, early in the outset of this football game. So Maryland's decided to have a controlled pass again trying to keep things short and simple and then look for the big hit maybe later in the game 
Third and ten with four receivers. And Georgia Tech brings six, and the quick pass to Jafar Williams is snuffed out quickly. That ball's ruled down, and a catch at the 20. Chris Young, the senior, made the play. And from here, it'll be a 37-yard field goal attempt. That was a perfect example of the, what they call the hot pattern. The linebacker came from the left side, and Hill just immediately hit the vacated area. That was a nice play by Hill, but the defensive back from Georgia Tech was right there to make the good play. Nick Novak missed his first five field goals. He's improved. He's hit four of his last five. This one will officially be a 38-yard field goal. Fake. Heads to the fullback. Lynch. Not going to get there. Stops two yards shy of the first down. Ricardo Wimbush and Kiaren Fox wise to the fake field goal. So despite getting the ball in Georgia Tech territory, Maryland is kept off the scoreboard. Six and a half left. Opening quarter. Seven nothing Turks. <laughs> Second quarter in Atlanta. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Mike Tirico, 7-0 Maryland. Dan Dyke on to punt. Try to pin the Terps inside their 10. <laughs> Almost got there. Bounces into the end zone. Alex Terrington, the deep snapper. Almost helped make the play, but it'll come out to the 20. Those of you just joining us, here's what's been going on on the opening drive, a third and one. Fumble by Georgia Tech was recovered by E.J. Henderson for the touchdown. Well, Georgia Tech yet to get their offense in sync, although Kelly Campbell, two grabs for 31 yards, and he breaks the school record now as 166 career catches. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof has got the Georgia Tech team pursuing the Perry. Remember, they shut out the Maryland offense. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. The lone score defensive. Senior from Kansas, Sean Hill, hands to the running back from Philadelphia, Perry, who gains just a couple of yards. Eric Watson defensively up there to make the stop. Oh, the route breach and impact. You always wonder, what will it do? It'll certainly get the production up, and here is Maryland thus far, leading the ACC in rushing, but eighth in passing. Still, they're scoring at a very good clip. But as we showed you in the last quarter, the passing numbers are getting better each game. Hill to Jafar Williams made a man miss. Crawled out to the first down at the 34-yard line. Jafar Williams is the receiver that they're waiting on really to become the go-to guy to help stretch a defense with teams loading up to try to take away Bruce Perry's ability to run the football. Quick drop. Get it out there as quick as possible, and then you need a receiver to make a play, and there, Williams makes a big play for the first down. Marvius Hester was supposed to be their best covered tackle man. That wasn't a very good play. He didn't wrap the guy up. Well, you saw this in Georgia Tech earlier. Now you see it from Maryland with the fullback, James Lynch, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. Gain of two yards. Guys, these guys, these teams don't live and die by the option, but they throw in enough option to keep the defense honest and just to let the other side know that it's there. So if they play the man coverage, it's another outlet to try to abuse that coverage. Anytime you run the option, it, it really makes the other team spirit of blitz because if they blitz to the inside, it's gone to the outside. Second and seven pass. Two Williams this time, he dropped it. He was thinking about how he was going to get around Chris Young. I already beat the other corner, Hester. I'm not going to put a different move on you, but you need the ball. Lee, you mentioned Hester. Yeah. Chris Young used to be a safety at Georgia Tech. He's been playing here for years. They moved into corner last year against Clemson, against Gardner, the talented receiver that they had. He stepped up so well that he, he's played cornerback since that game, and I think he really is their best corner because he's physical and he can come up and make a play. Maryland has been very proficient, but most of those conversions have been third and four or less. Third and seven, big four. Gary downfield, and they overthrow him. Well, a little coverage confusion. Chris Young and Myers were on different pages. Gary had a chance for six, but it fell incomplete. 
In that situation, Myers, number 27, was supposed to be double covering on the outside with Young, but he made a mistake on it, and, and Hill didn't give enough air to that thing. If he just laid it up, he might have had a good play on it. But that was a situation where they had a breakdown in the coverage, but Hill threw the right guy wrong kind of pass. Exciting return, man. And Kelly Rhino awaits Bernard with a kick away from Rhino. Tough to catch. He did it the 15. Worked around the official to get back to the 24-yard line. Aaron Thompson, the personal protector, did a heck of a job to avoid a blocked punt. 46-yard kick. Seven the return. Timeout in Atlanta. Maryland seven, Georgia Tech nothing. Two top 20 teams meeting in the ACC on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. This Georgia Tech offense slow to get going thus far. 19 plays, just 66 yards so far. Lee. As I said against Duke, they were very, very slow starting last week. They come out and scored the first four times at halftime. They got four touchdowns to go. Maybe they better get a little bit quicker this time, or they'll be in big time trouble. Because I'd say Maryland's a pretty good defense. Yeah, they are. Very good defense. From the 24, Joe Burns, less than a yard. That'll bring that average per snap down. Only about three yards per snap for this Georgia Tech team. And so the Boo Birds. George yeah. Gotze is a 50 year, really, he's a graduate student. He graduated back in May of last year, May 5th, 2001. Earned his degree, and it wasn't exactly an easy degree <laughs> degree to get either. Very good academic school, but his degree's in industrial and systems engineering. He got it done in four years. That pass is deflected and incomplete for Jonathan Smith. Whaley got a quick hand on it there. We talked about the zone blitz scheme of Gary Blackney, and that's exactly what he uses here. He's going to blitz quite a few people. Leo, Leo Joe, number 32, he's going to send. Then he's going to drop Whaley back in coverage. And you know what? As a quarterback, your computer doesn't always understand that. You're used to seeing that defensive end rush. Here, Gary Blackney drops Joe, and he almost made an interception for a touchdown. Blackney, the former Bowling Green head coach. Third and ten, big rush on. Pass is complete. For a first down, still on his feet, Kelly Campbell to the 46. Made a very good play there. 21 first down yards. Boy, I'm telling you one thing. That George Gotze will stand in the pocket. When you watch him step back in there, just keep your eye. Forget the pass. Watch him get crushed. Right? Wait. <laughs> the other guy got rushed. I'm sorry. That's all right. I thought that's it's right. the other guy that got hurt. No. No. He, he was, got pressure right. still. He was pressure, but still it was on his toe. Not that's his right. head. That's okay. <laughs> Sydney Ford <laughs> runs for about a yard and a half. I'll tell you what, they were pressuring so much oh. it looked like he went down. Well, you know, he did. He, they both of the tackles hit yeah. each other, and I thought it was him going down. But you know what? He stood in there nice with that left toe, anyhow. <laughs> Hey, Lee, you're, you're right, uh, though. You were right. Well, his right. toughness oh, sitting man. in that pocket, we, we've seen it all night tonight. Maryland, even when he gets uh, throws off, he gets popped in the mouth and sits in there and, and makes the big throws. Not much running on first down, leaving second and long a few times here. Option to four. Tony Jackson and E.J. Henderson make the stop. Now one thing I do notice, this is an offense that's trying to establish the run more. Well, they're trying to establish the run, and, and Bill O'Brien told us the importance of that. They're on the option. That's a triple option. He read it perfectly, but as a quarterback, after you make the read, you've got to attack that next level. He kind of took his time. You know why? He's slow. No, I, well, he's yeah, a little faster. Nice. He's no, faster he's than he's show and, and the left knee that he flew out in the peach yes. bowl. ACL injury. Third and eight. Intercepted! Randell Jones, once a starting quarterback at Maryland, comes up with the Terrapins' second turnover for the defense and 12th interception by Maryland this year. It's as many as they had all of last year. Just sitting back playing center field. Randell Jones, you mentioned his experience as a quarterback. Very intelligent football player. He's going to drop back, and, and George Godsey 
this is just a poor throw. This is a throw that George can make time and time again. Has an open man. You can see that he led him a little bit too far in front, and Jones just stepped up very naturally and made the pick. Perry is back at running back and not going anywhere as Georgia Tech swarms to him, and Bruce Perry is uh, not quick getting up here tonight. Looks a little bit slow and banged up. We talked to Ted Roof, defensive coordinator, yesterday. He mentioned that they had to win the first down. If they can win the first down and stuff the run with Perry, then he can use different kinds of coverages and use third and long. Remember, I'll make this point again. They shut out Maryland's offense. And this is the defensive tech. Second and a dozen. Four-man rush. He'll throw for Williams. Jafar Williams to the 39-yard line. 31 yards. Very interesting. Again, confusion in Georgia Tech secondary. And this time, Sean Hill takes advantage of it. Hester's going to let him get to the outside, slip behind. He doesn't have any help behind there. And Sean Hill just placed it perfectly in the hole. And again, Jafar Williams is the guy that can stretch that defense, which is going to open up more running room for Bruce Perry to run. Cover two, that corner should never let that receiver on the outside, but force him to the inside for the safety. That's why that play worked. First and ten. Run with Perry. Got out to the 36. Dr. Jerry Punch has been watching Bruce Perry during the timeouts and pregame. Doc? And Michael, the nation's leading rusher, has struggled this year. He came into this game with some hamstring soreness. He had some puffiness in his knee. He also had some sore ribs, which uh, team orthopedic surgeon Lee Ann Curl was checking out during the pregame. And a moment ago, he took a helmet and a knee to the outside of his right thigh. So very, very sore and banged up. But he's the nation's leading rusher. He's back in the football game. All right, Jerry. We'll see if he performs at that level where he's been the first five games. Option. He'll know where to go. Pirouette. Put his head down. And got six yards. You know what? That's exactly the way they drew it up with Ohio State for you, right? Go no. down there, do a little swirl, and come in there, right? You know, <laughs> this isn't Jamal Holloway and Charles no, Thompson running no, the option no, tonight no. on either side of the football. He's going to stretch. He actually gets to the outside. Yeah. He gets a good block, pins the defender by C.J. Brooks, and now he... He can't decide. He knows that the running back's running out of room. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Up, upfield, puts himself in third and short. Comes they, up smiling. They should put that play in the book like that. I don't think he could do that again if he tried. Third and a couple. <laughs> Perry always falls forward. And right there, that lean may have been enough for a first down. Aaron Fox will be with us. It all depends on the spot. Saw his body lay down right on the line. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, checking it out as well. Maryland, when they opened this season, thought that trying to replace Lamont Jordan, they, they might need two or three guys to step up. That line never lies. Yeah. And, and tonight, we might see the depth of the position because, as Doc mentioned, Bruce Perry right now a little bit banged up. We'll see if he can continue to play, but if he's unable to go, it's like Mark Riley and possibly Jason Crawford. A couple backups may have to step up. Riley, a bigger back at 6'3". He's a senior. Crawford's a true freshman. For now, Perry stays in, takes the carry, runs it into the red zone to the 18-yard line. Second and one, Hill kept it and picked up the first down at the 16-yard line. You know, when you're done broadcasting Herb Street, you better go be a high school coach and just run triple option. I've never seen anybody get so excited when the play is run. I love it. I love it. It's not Great pretty tonight, though. <laughs> no, we're losing a lot of pretty points. Can, can, you, can you tell that his dad's a coach? The triple, <laughs> the triple option is the best offensive system ever devised in college football. Ever. Yeah. Ever. It's, uh, uh, ever. That triple option, when run well, you can't stop it. You're right. In the red zone from the 17, Maryland looking to go up two touchdowns. Toss Kelly. Good penetration. Pierre and Fox made the play. Young and Fox got in there. Young threw the blocker. Fox made the tackle. The marker down on the play as well.
see Young take away the fullback. Linebacker scraping here, Fox here able to make the play. One thing about Bruce Perry, we, we touched on it at the beginning of the game. He runs hard for a smaller back, 5'9", 190 pounds, but you can't bring him down with an arm tackle. You've really got to wrap up on this guy to bring him down. Lines up on the wing, first and five. Watch him come back behind the quarterback, perhaps, here. Oh, will be the other wing back. And they run a reverse with Jafar Williams. He's wide open. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Maryland. Novak on for the extra point as Ted Roof's defense has given up a touchdown for the first time tonight. But the defensive score means it's 14-0 Maryland. Ralph Regan's return. He's got this big offensive playbook, but you got to know when to pull out the right page. He did there. They're for real, folks. Turtle by 14. In the closing seconds of the first half, Georgia Tech missed a scoring opportunity when Luke Monjay was unsuccessful on a 37-yard field goal attempt. Early on in the third quarter, with the score still 14-0 Maryland, the Terrapins failed to add to their lead when place kicker Nick Novak missed on a 32-yard attempt. We now pick up the action with 9.22 remaining in the third quarter. Georgia Tech has the ball first down and 10 on their own 20-yard line. And Maryland still leads 14-0 right here on ESPN Classic. Centennial Park in Atlanta. Great way to remember the good and the things that are remembered for other reasons from the 96 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Here it's 14-0 Maryland. And there is so far the defensive player of the night, E.J. Anderson. Nine on his, six unassisted tackles, six assisted tackles, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, one sack, a two-yard loss, and I'm telling you, the guy's all over the place. Johnson fits the option, tries to go up top, and there's the receiver open to midfield with Kerry Watkins. 30 yards. First time that Kerry Watson's had a chance. Looks like they're going to roll coverage into that Campbell. And what do you think in the slot, Kerry? Kerry Watson in the slot, Watkins. That's right. They put him in a slot, and they have option action. Look at the fake down the line. Kind of dips down to hide himself. And now you've got a mismatch there. If he leads him a little bit, he's probably still running for a touchdown. Tony Jackson, strong safety. Not gonna yeah, catch no up. way from midfield. Back to the air on first down. And complete to Kelly Campbell. Pick up of about four. Even though we expect George Godsey to just be very, very accurate every time he goes out and plays and be very effective. We have to remember that as, as intelligent as he is, they call him a computer out there on the field. He's still relatively young as far as his, his starting experience, so it's okay for him to kind of go up and down with his accuracy. He just needs to find his rhythm to give Tech's offense a chance. Jerome Cox, who didn't start because of injury, is in after Denard Wilson just got hurt. Gossi with time, throws incomplete. Coverage was good all around there. Pass intended for number six, Kelly Campbell. I think Maryland's defense is doing more than shutting Georgia Tech down. They're, they're keeping Godsey out of rhythm. Watch his drop here. He's trying to look over his left shoulder. He nearly falls down, dropping back. And again, as soon as he gets rid of the football, he's hit by 55 Mike Whalen. Needing to get just past the 40. Glover was in the same high school as Godsey, Jesuit High School in Tampa. They were there together for one year. 
They're going to bring another blitz here, this time from the outside. And watch George Gotze feel this coming right through his face. As soon as he gets rid of the football, he gets hit again. And this is the athletic ability of Glover. They feel that he potentially could be the greatest receiver that they have here on this roster at long time. First down play action. Gotze looking deep. Oh, Smith. Incomplete. Oh, Tony Oconrawan has been is all over blanketing receivers. And you have to go back to last year. Oconrawan was the most maligned Maryland Terrapin of them all. As a matter of fact, when Ralph Friedman was going around talking to boosters and fans, getting them interested in this year's Maryland team, they'd all ask, oh, what about Oconrawan? You can't play him. And he was getting criticized by fans in the offseason. To see the way the guy has come back, an interception here tonight, leads the nation in INTs, is a great story for the senior. He's from DeMantha High School, which is one of the great high schools in, around that Maryland area. Great basketball, plus football. Morgan Wooten, legendary coach. Henderson, the pressure, the pass underneath to Watkins. That's a completion at the 35, a pickup of four yards. And Georgia Tech is becoming exclusively a passing team. I think that sounds good, but in my opinion, they better do something to keep that pressure off of Gotzi. Because our guy, E.J. Henderson, cracked him again. And he's not going to get up after one of these hits. This is getting hit a lot. they got to do something like a run or a yeah. swing. Keep the pressure draw. Well, they only have 24 runs for 26 yards tonight. Yeah, but at least they can keep their pass rush down. Right? I understand. I understand. 35. Four wide. Gotzi, pressure, put it up. Incomplete for Glover. And again, you can't blame Gotzi for not getting it out to the right spot because he was going down. Might go for it here on fourth down, guys. Well, Gotzi's going to get hit again here, Kurt, because of the pressure. Now, watch it, you little twist in the line. Boom. Remember, defensive coaches will tell you, not only do they want to sack the quarterback, but every time they hit him, they think that's a win, don't they? Sure do. You get the quarterback starting to feel the pressure exactly. instead of focusing downfield. And they've hit him. They've thrown 11 straight passes. He's probably been hit 11 straight times. Going for it on fourth down. Really jump. Gotzi sneaks it and runs it forward for the first down. <laughs> the markers did come down. The quick snap to induce the offside, and they got it on the run. That's what they call a safe play and a free play. Because as soon as he snapped the ball, they jumped offside. It's a free play. He automatically ran a quarterback sneak. That's a good, well-coached football team that does that occasionally. It's also a good job by the center, David Schmidtko. Centers, centers are caught, but as soon as you see a defensive player jump offside, right. snap the ball back, and the quarterback's got to be ready to secure the football. Schmidt, Gall, and Godsey, very close friends, obviously quarterback centers, spend a lot of time together, or play uh, college football video games. They wanted to ask you guys about video oh, games yeah. yesterday, yeah. comments right. you make on game day, they're really close. Godsey, firing, 2-12, to 12, Kelly Campbell. At 16 yards. Outside of the quarterback sneak, everything has been through the air, and Georgia Tech is having success. This time, they're going to go to the main target. Kelly Campbell gets an inside burst, comes back to the outside, and again, recognize that the football's in the air before Kelly Campbell makes his cut. And he was reading Tony O's body, and he leaned one way, he cut the other way. That's why that worked. Here is Gotzi. shaken up in the scramble for the ball 14-6 and Luke Manje who has an ACC record 113 consecutive extra points makes it 114 and we have a seven-point game 
Interesting about Manje. You know, he did miss an extra point at Syracuse. Yes, he did. It was but a there penalty. was a penalty. He got to do it over again. They caught a break here, threw the football all the way down the field. George Gotsi makes the throw. Glover reaches, comes up short, and Burns is there to make a big touchdown. And Tech getting right back in this game. Again, Maryland has a, a an offense that relies on the timing patterns because they don't like the protection of the deep drops. Here, five-step drop, one hitch, throw the football. Hester baited Gary the entire time, stepping back, stepping back, hoping that Sean Hill would throw the football and stepped up and made the play. First down pass, incomplete. Intended for Burns. The official got in the way that time. The umpire. The umpire got right in the way of Burns trying to catch that football. So Hill and Maryland have now turned it over a couple of times. And there you see the senior summons. Sean Hill and George Godsey are equaling their season INT totals tonight. Some of the familiarity both teams have with each other. This pass is complete to Smith at the 41. Pick up a five, 35 coming up. And Gotsi and Hill each had three INTs for the season coming in. George has thrown three, although one wasn't his fault. Sean Hill has thrown two, and as we mentioned, they're running the same offense. They all know uh, what each other does here. Hill's back up with Trez Harris, who just stand loose. The Atlanta native. I think the left tackle that time, Nate Dorsey, jumped early. The reason he did is because that last sack that he gave up to Roundtree. Prior to the snap, there was a false start by the offense. That's five yards, and it's still third down. Well, there's no hiding Dorsey when he makes a move. Oh. He has size 17 cleats. Third down, and ten. You can't hide a size 17 oh, shoe. 6'6", 315 for New Orleans. And remember when Bill O'Brien says that Georgia Tech rarely gets that kind of a great football player here. And we got him. True freshman playing the left tackle spot. So now it's third and ten. Godsey. Pass is caught. Oh. Kerry Watkins saw Ty Stewart not turn to the ball. And Tech has it at the Maryland 32. Now, Kerry Watkins, every six or seven times he touches the football, he gets a touchdown. This is a sensational pass, but more important, look at that concentration, Kirk. He went up, caught it at his highest point with his hands. Isn't that a great-looking catch by Watkins? Final minute, third quarter. Complete for Campbell. As soon as we are done, Sports Center on ESPN. Rich Eisen and Chris Berman join us. Boomer, back in the house, more Sports Center. After a couple of games of the baseball playoffs on ESPN Radio, Chris will join Rich for all the scores and the highlights from the two AL playoff games. Good look ahead to the weekend in college football as well, plus the hockey. And Michael Jordan's first game, preseason game in Detroit tonight. This is second and ten. Joe Burns haven't seen much of him in this quarter, and he runs for seven yards. That's just the second running play out of the 22 offensive plays for Georgia Tech this quarter. Here, Georgia Tech just challenged them up front. This is a simple play. Two tight ends, isolation up front. Need a big block from the fullback here. Redshirt freshman Jonathan Jackson 
I don't know if he had a great block, but at least he got in the way of E.J. Henderson <laughs> to open up the hole for Joe Burns. He's and open oh, no, he's, go ahead, he's that redshirt freshman, yes. 6'2", 225 from Jacksonville Bowles that could be a great prospect here. O'Leary's team, the only touchdown, and off we go to the fourth quarter. Two friends going head-to-head, -head, trying to get their offenses to perform better in the final 15. Off we go to the fourth quarter of college football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. With Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico. Two top 20 teams going head to head. Maryland trying to beat a top 20 team for the first time, top 25 team, the first time in 34 tries. George Godsey's had excellent numbers in the fourth quarter in his career and very good this season, including the Clemson game that went into overtime. We start with third and about three. And Ralph Regent sees his old offense go four wide. godsey has got a pocket. Got a first down with Smith. Smith! Hey! Touchdown! on for the tying extra point. 115 in a row. New game at 14. Smith in motion. A little more on the ground. Burns got out of the first tackle. And got another first down. To the 46-yard line. 16 yards for the junior. I think Joe Burns is one of the more underrated backs in college football. He has so much versatility. Mike, you mentioned he can be a tailback, he can be a fullback, but motion him out. Look how hard he runs with his football. He broke about five tackles on that one carry to pick up the first down there. Keeps his legs running. He's a tough, tough running back. They're in the process of getting set up for play action here. Godsey to Matt Bay, the tight end. Eight yards, and this looks like the Georgia this Tech offense. So it's a hit, hitting behind the play, knocked down a couple of coaches on the sideline there. That's a good call, Mike. And let me tell you another reason why Burns is running so fast and hard is because the point that Kurt broke up, made up. He only ran the ball twice, so he's rested. It isn't like these backs are going to keep running, keep running, keep running, get tired. This young man is ready to go and run the football. Now, they can use more balance in their attack right now. So yeah, you guys are right. More balance. And, and all of a sudden, Mike, you made a good point as well. You feel the rhythm now of the Georgia Tech offense that we've seen for years. Second in the yard. Sydney Ford, the junior, into the boundary. Big hit by Carone Cox in the corner, but that's a first down. First and ten for the driving jacket Saturday night, 6.30 ESPN2. Virginia Tech sliding up in the rankings, takes on Boston College and William Green. He's also been over 100 yards in each of his games this year. For the Tech defense so far, number one overall, number one against the run. They shut out West Virginia. You'll see Virginia Tech BC, 6.30 ESPN2, Saturday night. First and ten. Godsey pumping. And now looking long, it's incomplete. Gonsi's footwork again, a little awkward. Can't seem to get his feet underneath, and it's tough to be accurate with the throw. A lot of that has to do with the pressure from Maryland. Seems like he's back there. As soon as he pump fakes, he's, he's trying to just buy time because of the pressure from Maryland. You saw that brace on George's leg towards ACL in the Georgia Dome in the uh, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game against Clemson. We asked him about it. And he said, I keep pulling that brace up all the time. Always slipping down on me. And I asked him about cutting. And he said, no, I'm comfortable cutting. But it took me a while to make sure I was comfortable. Sidney Ford with the carry for a couple of yards. Plus, he lost style points, too. With the big brace. Jerry? 
Now you mentioned that they operated on uh, George Gossie's left knee, left ACL repair in the final four minutes of the Peach Bowl last year, and, and Gossie doesn't like wearing the brace. In fact, the, the knee is actually stronger than the other knee. He wears it for protection. And I asked one of the docs, I said, why, why the brace? He said, well, it's not like we're taking his speed away. We really didn't have any to start with, so we're just going to protect the knee. So uh, that was cold, very uh, cold. <laughs> I said Clemson, I beg your pardon. LSU is the team they played in the Peach Bowl. Third and seven. to mark him for the first down at the 31-yard line, too. Will Glover, again, they went to the same high school in Tampa, Florida, Jesuit High School. I want to tell you about a well-coached receiver. That receiver went two yards behind the first down and then came back to the ball. I've seen it a hundred times that these receivers go short. This is a perfect example. Now, watch Glover. He'll drive down. He knows where the first down is. He goes two yards, comes back. Look, when he comes back, he separates from the defensive back. That's why that play works. It's a heck of a spot, too. Oh. <laughs> first and 10 for the 31. Four first downs on this drive. Burns got out of the tackle and keeps going to the 27-yard line. Leon Joe said hello, and Burns said goodbye. Again, Jonathan Jackson leading the way up front. You can see the Georgia Tech players starting to taste it, getting closer and closer. Remember we talked to the George O'Leary? This is George O'Leary's football. That pass and stuff is nice, and they better work. But when you get down in there, as he said, the, hey, the Doc Bunch, we better push this one in and get it in there, run it in there. Boy, is he tough coach. Charles Hill is down and shaken up for Maryland, perhaps cramping as well. And it's exactly what is his situation. They look at the nose man from Palmer Park, Maryland, Baltimore suburb most experienced on this uh, front line, the most consistent defensive lineman. We're all even at 14 with 8.20 left. Here is our Miller High Life storyline tonight. Seven turnovers in this game, five by Georgia Tech. George Godsey's numbers keep getting better. It doesn't look like he's had a 300-yard passing game, but he's getting there. Tech, as you see, has mainly thrown the ball on scoring drives. But in the second half, Georgia Tech's offense is taking over. Remember, this is an offense that Ralph Friedgen designed, was the coordinator of for four years. And he's, he said something very interesting. He said, I put on the film to watch Georgia Tech, and I'm watching my offense. And I'm watching my offense score 70 against Navy and 44 in the loss to Clemson, 37 against Duke. And I'm also coaching against my friend, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years since they were recruiting in New York together sharing a meal because O'Leary had a better budget to eat on the road while recruiting. Gotsy is sacked. That's Randy Starks and Duran Roundtree and Michael Whaley and the fourth sack of the night for Maryland. The important part about that sack is it took him out of field goal range and the wind is blowing in the face. They collapsed the pocket round Gotsy. He didn't get a chance to throw it up but I would right now Make sure that I get enough of a pass completion, Kirk, that I could kick a field goal if necessary. I would go for the whole thing. I would go for the touchdown. Great play by the freshman Starks there. Manje's long field goal career is 47 yards. From here, it would be a 52-yarder. Godsey's toss. It is caught. Shy of the first down, but there you go, Coach. Kelly Campbell's reception will make it a 39-40 yard field goal attempt. Now, most of the time, I would go for it, but right now, I would try to win the game with a field goal because my defense is playing so well. Now, he might go for it, and that's fine, but I'm telling you, I would kick the field goal and get ahead 17-14. We're going to go for it. Okay, good. I'm first guessing. Understood. Never, never second guess. Yeah, no second no, guess, no, guys. first guess. Thursday night, it's all about first guess. That's right. Tex made a couple of fourth downs tonight. Trying to draw them off. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. They're going for the field goal. Godsey takes the timeout. When we come back, likely a field goal attempt with Georgia Tech ahead. They've missed one from the right hash already tonight. Now Luke Manje will come on to try a 40-yard field goal. The music aficionado who plays guitar, violin, banjo, and the mandolin. With sweet music for Georgia Tech to put them ahead 17-14. Manjay the field goal to 
put him on top out of the hole of Hal Higgins. What a story this kid is. His first year back playing, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease a couple of years ago in the hospital when they were first diagnosing his illness he told his dad he didn't think he was going to make it through the night had 105 fever they diagnosed it 14 sessions of chemotherapy ended in december of 99 he worked around the football office last year had a 4-0 gpa came back to the team was a hunter a backup hunter they got him in as a holder he's done a great job holding this year and as we know the snap holding kicker equally as important All right. But Hal Higgins has done his job on the field, and what a thrill it is for Hal to be on the field and to be a part what of this team. What a great story. Yeah. It's great. great story. A very important part. Interesting part about that drive, Mike. With 58 yards, five runs, seven passes. Nice balance yes. to get that field goal. After all the passes. Exactly. On the other two score drives. The they, got them, they got to loosen up, got to loosen up, then they ran. Well, let's see what Maryland can do here, because its offense has scored just once despite being in Georgia Tech territory six times tonight. Remember the defense is the other score. We have a long 80-yard drive to try to mount as Rich Parson catches it for a touchback. From the 20, he'll start with play action. Nearly intercepted. Ricardo Winbush was covering the fullback James Lynch. And Hill slow to get up. Now, this time, the quarterback did get hit. I made a mistake of that last one, but I'm telling you. <laughs> this time you promise? I promise you, Sean Hill got hit. Now, remember I made a mistake before, but watch this one. Up. I you got, got it that right. one. You got I got one out of two. That's 50%. Greg Gathers hit him. Boy, Almost yeah. like seeing a different defense the way yeah, Georgia yeah. Tech is flying around right now. Second and ten. Pass is caught by Jafar Williams. Five to the 25. Marvius Hester with the coverage. Remember what Jerry told us guys coming out of the locker room at halftime? Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, his fourth year here. To change the philosophy. No switching around. We're going to stay in college and stay in that defense. And they have played better. Is that a reason? Yeah, they've Absolutely. been in the lock in. You're, you haven't seen a mental mistake since Doc told us about that report. And since Georgia Tech has been sitting in their defense and not trying to outthink themselves. Paralysis through analysis. Put hit people when you start thinking too much on defense. Third and five. Will they bring it? Pressure coming. Hill gets away. And throws complete to the 34 and Jafar Williams. That's a good hard throw on the run. Nice play. Sean Hill, I think, continues to impress all of us up here watching. A lot of pressure on that third down. He felt the pressure coming up the middle. Gathers also coming from the outside. He's able to avoid that pressure, not only avoid it, right when it looked like he was just going to throw it away, he finds his open man for far wins. The way this game is going, this may be the second to last or last opportunity for Maryland with the ball. The 34, pump and go long. Now go down. They're moving Greg Gathers all around. Here he moves from the outside, comes down into the inside as a defensive end, and that stunt confused Maryland up front, and he came scot free. Second and 18. Clock is going downhill really fast. Four and a half to go. Pressure. Set to go. This time, Rogers. What happens a lot of times you get in the fourth quarter, that offensive le left tackle, C.J. Brooks. Remember I told you what a great job he was doing? 6'5", 3'11", he's getting tired. He's getting tired, and his feet quit moving. You notice the reason why Gathers got around him that time <laughs> is old Brooks couldn't move his feet fast enough. Athlete, step. Yeah. athlete got around him. Nick Rogers is a tremendous athlete. C.J. Brooks, a red shirt freshman. Yeah. Got, a, got, a, got a lesson there. Third and a quarter of the field. They try a screen to get some back with Perry. Got one block. Not going to go anywhere else. 
Hit hard at the 25 by Fred Wright. Backup defensive tackle. Maryland will punch it away with 3.30 to go. Georgia Tech numerically has played well all night, but we're seeing a different defense right now. They have applied this kind of pressure on Sean Hill the entire evening. They're playing at a different level, different intensity level. That one got back there, waffling to Brooks Bernard. Gets off a good kick. Rhino, the 27. Jerome Cox hit him. And got some company to pull him down at the 45-yard line. The punt was 48. The return was 8. Georgia Tech's defense has gotten the job done. 3.02 to go. Tech by 3. Back in Midtown, Atlanta, Georgia. On College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. 18 remaining unbeaten in Division 1A. Maryland is one of the two that have matched or exceeded the win total from last year. That's why Ralph Fries is getting so much attention and credit. Going up against his best buddy in coaching, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years. They battle here for the next three minutes. Burns the first down run. Kept going. He got five to the 40. Now, I'm not second guessing, but I'm first guessing. I'm telling you, if I was Georgia Tech, I would not throw the football. I would force Maryland to use their three timeouts. I would not have a chance for a turnover. All backs running with would carry hold two hands. Then I'd punt it, and I'd let that defense you talked about play yep. with yep. a long field. I would took not the first throw time the out. Took yeah, the first I'd time make out. them use three. See? And then I would, whatever they do, don't throw the football. I don't care what. Just keep putting the football in the hands of number 35. <laughs> 35 knows what to do with it. Finish the thought of Ralph Region and the turnaround here at Maryland. 18 remaining Division I unbeaten, 1A. Maryland has equaled last year's win total with five. Washington State has exceeded the win total from last year. Cougars won four. They are 5-0 and oh as well. But it's really an impressive turnaround because, as I mentioned, 17 starters came back. It wasn't like there were, you know, a whole bunch of players who were sitting around who hadn't been here before. And all the little things are starting to add up. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. You have to remember that Ron Vanderlinden, who was the coach who did recruit these guys. So they did a good job of identifying talent, getting them to College Park. Whatever was missing, these ingredients of this coaching staff have come together and have put Maryland in line for a bowl game this year. You know, if Maryland ends up losing this football game, the way they played tonight, they can still walk out of here with a lot of confidence for the rest of the year in the ACC. Second and six. Burns is hit by Henderson. Maryland takes the quick timeout. Here at the 243 mark. They lost a few yards. It's third and seven. Third and eight, actually, coming up. Third and eight. They need to get to the 46. Will they throw? Well, they will. Quick pass. Up by Glover. First down. I tell you what. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a magnificent call going against percentages. If that thing would have popped up and it fell and they got it, it would have been all over. That was one sensational call by Bill O'Brien and George Holder. Great call, great execution. Oh. Oh. We've seen this route all night long. It's man coverage. Again, it's a pick. It's a pick route. We're going to call it a rub route. We're going to see these guys in a couple weeks. That's a rub route. <laughs> Came underneath there and picked up the first down. Good call, coach. Maryland, one timeout left. Georgia Tech is the first down away from closing this out. Burns gets nothing. Terrapins will take the timeout here at the 2.08 mark. Step out for a half minute. Second and 10 when you come back. Taken down by the freshman Randy Starks. Maryland out of timeouts. So the clock will run. Of all the plays Bill O'Brien called today, that 
last pass play was brilliant call. You see, the clock is stopping here. The officials from the back came up here. Because it didn't start. Didn't start on time properly? Exactly. Okay. It Fans. got stuck. Yeah. And that usually doesn't happen at home. It usually happens when you're on the road. That clock operator is your best friend. Please change oh. the clock to reflect one minute, 59 yeah. seconds. Seven seconds. Enough. Seven seconds is enough. Clock operator is buddies with Friedman. He's trying to help out his old buddy. <laughs> better not be, or he won't be working Joking. on the clock next week. And now they reset it and wind it uh, with the 25-second play clock. So this play will have to be snapped at the 133 mark. Have just hit the huddle. They call quick plays. Maryland with defensive confusion. We'll have 11 on the field here. Burns left side. Go down. Don't get that sideline. Oh. 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 Yeah. Don't no. come running off by George O'Leary either. No. But Joe Burns has had a very good night. But he's trying to get those him. extra yards. Look at George. I think the offensive line should protect their running back right now. See, what they did is they, they lost 30 seconds there. Sure did. Oh. At least. At least 30. Yeah. So, I mean, that is absolutely a disaster. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Run. Hey, pat him on the back. All right, we'll take care of that. <laughs> As a coach, is this, is this the time of the game? That this, no, it's, Do you go after the punt? Oh, absolutely. Have to. Have to. Maryland's blocked two this year. Good punt protection. Julian Gary let it bounce. 80 yards, no timeout, 78 seconds. Can you do it? We'll find out with Sean Hill. Like you mentioned, 80 yards. 80 yards gets you a win. That's it, thank you. They get, you know, maybe they pick up uh, 60 yards. Uh, 50 yards. Well, I've seen Maryland twice already this year. Get a shot. No, no, no. I'm no, counting on them not no, taking no, a field goal. No, that's right. You never know. <laughs> yes. Never know. Novak has kid nothing. In fact, the that's last right. time they had a chance to kick a field goal, they faked it. That's yeah. not a good sign. Carries their possession receiver, Jafar Williams, number 19. It's their receiver that can get upfield. Tech rushes three, covers with eight. Mass is caught. By Jafar Williams, didn't get a first down, clock runs. This is where a Ralph Friedgen team usually is well schooled. See how they can operate here. They stopped it because the referee had a check if it was a first down or not. The umpire shouldn't stand over the ball. You, you don't need to be there. The clock was wrong. They didn't start the play clock. Had wasted seven seconds on the official. Horrible job. Has caught first down, clock will stop at the 35. Make sure when you're at home, you're not supposed to have. Maybe, maybe the guys running the clock's friends with Ralph Friedgen. That's day what I said. Time. He's moving to Maryland next week, though. Yeah. That was the official. They were waiting to start yeah. the play clock, but the game clock was running. Yeah, comes my guy. From the 35, Perry needs to get out of bounds. Gained only a yard. Stops the clock with 40 seconds. <laughs> Chris Berman, Rich Eisen, Sports Center, as soon as we're done here. 33 yards is his long. Novak. Against so Virginia last week. You get to that 16-yard line, got a shot. Realistic. I don't think they can get, get to the 16-yard line if Georgia Tech wasn't even out there. You got to get to the 25. Give him a shot. And about 40 yards to go. Again, oh, three-man rush. Uh-oh. To the 46 to Julian Gary. Clock stops. 33 seconds. Nice throw by Hill there. Oh. He gathers was right in his face. That was a beautiful pass. See, here they go. Clock stops. Lined up. Everything's done perfectly here. Up to the 46. Hill moves to his right. Got to get rid of it. Threw it away. And incomplete. 22 seconds left. Now, the interesting thing here for coaching the quarterbacks, that if he does complete a long pass, it's a first down, they need to snap the ball and throw it down to stop the clock. Because remember, they have no timeouts. So if they complete a pass for the first down, line up, throw it down, and then make a decision what kind of play you want to use. Realistically, 
20 more yards, gives him a shot. Yeah. A field goal. Sure. Novak has the leg. He's just young and has no confidence right now. A four-man rush this time. Incomplete. 15 seconds left. Maryland sits atop the ACC, a place they haven't been in a very long time, with a 3-0 conference record. But as you see, six teams are lined up with one loss there. So if Georgia Tech hangs on, we're going to have seven teams with one loss in the conference. Two weeks, we get a chance to see North Carolina and Georgia right Tech. This will be another great ACC game here on Thursday night. Remember, if, if, if they get close enough, it is a field goal with the win. That's right, Lee. Light wind in his back. Light wind in his back. That gives him an extra five or ten yards. Fifteen seconds left. Hill needs to hit one downfield. It's complete for a first down at the 28. So Rich Parsons, the freshman, seven seconds now left. Now going to fire the ball into the ground. Fire the ball the into the ground. Fire it into the ground and kick your field goal. See, see how quick the offensive yeah. line is set up. Yeah, they're well coached. Yeah, they really are. Dropped it back to the 29-yard line. Ready for play. Down the ball. Five seconds left. From here, it's well, a 46-yard field goal. He's got to try it. Yep. And on comes Nick Novak, who won the job from the senior, Vidad Silkovic. He said he has to make them from 40 yards and in. He has the leg to make it from there. This one's a little bit long. Applaud the job there by Sean Hill in the terms of their offense. Remember what Nick Rogers and Greg Gathers had done the previous series and how dominating they were. That was That's big right. time to just to give Maryland a chance here at this 46-yard field goal. Uh, yeah. They'll, they'll no, freeze them. Yep. I didn't think they could do it. I got it. You got to give them credit for the offensive line, as you said. But now you know what's going to happen. Everybody's going to second guess Ted Roof from playing the old Ben, 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 ben defense. Prevent. Yeah. The prevent. Why? Why weren't you doing the same thing you do? I, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You see Ralph Friedman there. Here's what Ralph told me last night about Nick Novak. He said the kicker. I've been giving him grief. Come on, you got to do. You got to get it done. You got to make put pressure on him in practice. Made them do up-down drills if their timing wasn't good enough. Yeah. And then Ralph said, you know what, i got to lay off the kid a little bit. He kicked better against Wake Forest, better against Virginia. So Novak, on Wednesday night at dinner, said to Preaching Coach, how come you're not giving me grief anymore? And Ralph said, well, maybe I need to just leave you alone. Because I was giving you grief and you weren't kicking well. You performed better. So now I'm going to leave you alone. You know what? Kickers are like relief oh, yeah. pitchers. You, you get their psyche. They're, they're so... Sensitive. You have to be careful with it. This was his earlier attempt from 32 yards on the right hash. Now remember, on this kind of a field goal, you need to rush in the middle and try to block it because a field goal kicker, sidewinder, that's kicking a long one has a tendency to kick it low. So if they block this kick, they'll block it up the middle. See all those linemen, all the gladiators who have been battling for four quarters. Now you're lying a kicker to try to tie the game from 46 yards. On line, and it is good! And we are going to overtime! What a kick! I was wrong! <laughs> I didn't think he'd ever get that far. I told too. you, don't count it on my man. All right, no back! Coming through! Nick Novak, no longest field goal of his young career oh. by 13 yards sends us to OT in Atlanta. Oh. <laughs> Can you believe it? We have a coin toss coming up. Hill took the Terps 51 yards in 78 seconds and Nick Novak 4 of 11 kicking field goals this year. The red shirt freshman from Charlottesville could have made that from 50. <laughs> He's been worked hard by Ralph Friedgen for a month and a half. That hard work and a little grief paid off. And Ralph Friedgen coming to coach against his old buddy oh, says, man. bring on a fifth quarter when you come back to Atlanta. Point toss here for OT.
ball going that way away from the student section by the way you heard the uh, obvious choice you have choice of offense defense or end of the field each team one possession from the opponents 25 no game clock only the play clock you have to go for two if we get to triple overtime 33 overtimes in 2000 average one and a half period so somewhere between a one or a double overtime game every team that won the toss as Georgia Tech here did here last year sure. chose defense mm -hmm. and they won 22 of the 33 games you know Joe Burns let's not forget he ran out of bounds and that 30 seconds <laughs> left on the clock gave Maryland a little more time to get down the field a mistake that Joe Burns typically would never make right something you usually don't see from him Maryland ball first to start our first 0-2 Pick up first downs. It's like a drive. We'll start with the option with Hill. Nothing. That's Mitchell, who was a fullback last week because of injury to Daryl Smith and Aether Brown, who's the starting middle linebacker and has played here tonight. Although Bruce Perry's dinged up tonight, I think they try to get the football in his hands, whether he's slipping out of the backfield, maybe in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Or, the, or they've had a lot of success throwing the football to Gary. Yeah, well. but don't forget that reverse play somewhere there. They scored a touchdown with that reverse play. Second down. Maybe we'll use that wide side of the field here with a throw. Here is Hill throwing. Complete to the 11-yard line. Julian Gary, first down. They can pick up another first down at the one. Gary comes into tonight's game, their leading receiver, and he doesn't have big playability, lightning speed, but I'll tell you what he does have is a savvy to find a hole in zone coverage. He's done it time and time again tonight, and he's continued to come up with a big catch for the Turks. Then 10, Perry, who has now 18 carries on the night. 49 yards. Mike good Kirk. This is exactly the same spot where they ran that reverse play off the option for a touchdown. I'll guarantee if I'm towards the tech, I'm watching somebody for some kind of a trick play, especially for the jerk. Exactly the same spot. And you know what? Number one is in the same position as he was. The wing back. Same formation, Lee. Same formation. Second and 11. Perry covered as a receiver. Hill's looking for somebody to break free. Throws it up and out of the back of the end zone. Now third and 11 for the first down. 12 for the touchdown. In Georgia Tech's last game here in Atlanta, two weeks ago against Clemson, they went overtime and Clemson won it with a touchdown, 47-44, after Tech had the ball first and kicked a field goal. On a quarterback draw by Woodrow Dancer. They wouldn't run a quarterback draw. Now, would they? No. Okay. Georgia Tech has lost its last two overtime games, the Clemson game this year, and last year on Thursday Night Football to North Carolina State. Carries up at the top to Perry. Made one man miss, couldn't make any more miss. It'll be from the right hash, a 26-yard field goal attempt after Fred Wright's tackle. Now, here's the tough thing for Novak. He just sent the game into overtime. He's a hero. Everybody's coming over, patting him on the back. He's not known for being a consistent kicker. Now he's got to come back. Wait a minute. And I know it's a short kick. I know. Wait a minute. But now you're he's got to come back and hit it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying there's a little bit. What do you think he's going to make it? I'm not saying if he's going to make it. I'd say, I bet you makes it. He's going to make it. All right. Brooks Bernard holds. I mean, right in the middle, right through. I mean, like Jan like oh, yeah. <laughs> All the torture that Ralph gave him, <laughs> killing him. I mean, Whatever he's doing, I mean, he's working. Split the, split the, right in the middle. <laughs> Maryland 20, Georgia Tech 17. What a, game. a field goal sends us to a second overtime. A touchdown wins it. No score. Maryland stays undefeated. I can't believe you guys ever doubted down in Nova. That comes in, he kicks the game. Look, all, I'm sorry, it's over 10 to the left. But it's end over end every time. Oh, Even the one he missed, they look good. 
look the part. All right, we'll see what happens. Now. Yeah, here we go. Tech saw Clemson do the same thing. Kick a field goal for Georgia Tech. Clemson scored when they got the ball and won in overtime on this field two weeks ago. Dodsey throws to the tight end, Matt Bay. Three to the 22. Second down coming up. Chris Berman retires at the Sports Center as soon as we're done. Post game coverage of this one on ESPN News. You can visit there and then go back to Sports Center if you so choose. Great start to a good college football weekend. And if we've learned anything tonight, that Maryland is a legit team. Absolutely. Second and seven, tight formation. They run for it. He lost the ball. Maryland wins. They recover the fumble, and the Terrapins are undefeated. 6 0. Oh, and Ralph Region comes back to Georgia Tech and wins. The game started with a Joe Burns fumble for touchdown. It ends with a Burns fumble. He ran out of bounds. He had the tough night. And the Maryland Terrapins have won six games after winning five all of last year. Wow. Aaron Thompson made a big stick in there defensively. Move over Fresno State. There's another Cinderella story in college football, and it's the Maryland Terps. Unbelievable effort here by this defense all night long. They gave up some yards in the second half, but when they've had to come up with a big play, they've been able to do it. Fumble, once they recovered it, they knew they had secured the win. There is the hit, and it bounced free. And the sixth turnover of the night, Randell Jones, the old quarterback, fell on it. And Ralph Region comes back to a place where he coached for nine years. And the alum of Maryland has the Terps at 6-0, a place they haven't seen in more than 15 years. They've guaranteed a winning season and are likely bowl-bound. Final score is Maryland 20, Georgia Tech 17. For Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Mike Tirico, thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, a worldwide leader in sports. Maryland is for real. They win by three.